Yes, class. Is this audible? Darshan, Rifat, Sahal, Wafia. Yes, ma'am. So did you people revise this? We had completed at least till here, no? The comparison and the differences between the electrostatics and the magnetostatics. So electric charge we had seen, which turned out to be the magnetic charge. Electric dipole into magnetic dipole, electric field, magnetic field lines for axial and equatorial point. Torque is important. This torque is equal to MB sine theta will be used in today's numerical as well. And work done is MB cos theta. Now, let's do a numerical over here. See, direction of dipole is from south, south to north. Remember, this is the di direction. of dipole, magnetic dipole. So from south to north, if you'll move, this is the direction. Uh, not B, it can be magnetic. Yeah, this is the magnetic field we have wheel we are calculating. So at this point, this will be the south to north direction at this point. Magnetic field lines will move inside. From inside, it will move from south to north. So this will be B1. Similarly, from north to south, here again, from south to north, this will be the direction. Now, class, look at these two points again, carefully. This is what this is. We have understood where we have to locate it. So point P, got it, all of you. This is the point P where you have to locate. Now forget you have this second bar magnet. Just focus on this first bar magnet. This is the magnetic axis. Last class we have discussed the terms as well. So magnetic axis we have already discussed. This is the magnetic axis. So this point P is lying on the axis of it. So we'll say this is axial point. Fine class, we will say this is the axial point. So B1 will be what? Mu naught by 4 pi. This is the constant. 2 m divided by R cube. Uh, this separation, take this as R. This is R cube. Fine. Now, the direction of axial field is exactly the same as that of magnetic moment. So ma magnetic moment is in this direction, south to north. So magnetic field will also be south to north. This will be I cap. B2 regarding second magnetic field. See, this is the axis. Uh, speaker was not working. Okay, Darshan. Darshan, see, here we have two bar magnets with us. These are kept in crisscross formation. Crossed. Now we have to find the magnetic field at this point. P. So here what will happen? Just focus on this first, this bar magnet. If this is the magnetic axis, magnetic axis in the last class we have discussed this so this is the magnetic axis so here this is the magnetic axis so this point p is lying on the axis so it means we have to find the magnetic field for the axial point axial line this at least we have understood by this information and we have just kept this in the form similarly this is this point is r now magnetic axis for this is here so point P is not lying on the magnetic axis for the second one. It means this is what? This is the equatorial point. So formula becomes minus mu naught by 4 pi m by r cube. Now ma magnetic moment's direction is upwards. So magnetic field's direction will be downwards. This becomes minus of j cap. Fine, so net magnetic field, whenever you have to answer net magnetic field, write it as B1 plus B. This is how you have to answer if direct complete bar magnets are provided. Fine class, just note this. Thing.
Waalaikum uh, Asalaam, Fad. See, here what we had, we had two bar magnets. One is placed in this position, second is in standing position. So here what happened, you had to find the magnetic field at this point P. So for the first bar magnet, you can observe that if you draw the axis, magnetic axis of the first bar magnet, point P is lying on the axis of it. So just put in the formula for magnetic field, you get mu naught by 4 pi into 2 magnetic moment divided by RQ what we have studied in the last class. Regarding the direction, so direction of magnetic field is same as that of magnetic moment. So we write I cap. For the second bar magnet, magnetic axis and point P, both are perpendicular to each other. It means it is the equatorial point case. Right, let's do mention this as well. This is you have done through axial and this you have done through equatorial. In the exam, no need to write, but if just in case when you're revising, you may get confused why you have added two over there and what all. So magnetic moments direction is from south to north. So here what will happen when you will move your cursor from south to north, magnetic field will be opposite towards the negative y-axis. This is what we have just done till now. Ma'am, the second magnetic field is the this north to south, which is vertical. See, magnetic moment. Magnetic moment is from south to north. So magnetic moment will be upwards. So direction of magnetic field will be what? Opposite for equatorial. That's why we have magnetized downwards. Clear? Okay. Any doubts from the last lesson? I think in the last class only, no, we have completed the chapter number four of NCR. If you have any doubts, let me know. Did you people receive the assignments? Or update me about the assignment today. All right, just check your app and all. What was the last assignment you've received? So, Class, do one thing. Magnetic charges, magnet, this uh, moving charges and magnetism is over. We had a test on biot servers. So those papers I'll show you on Tuesday. I'll send you the marks today only. Today or tomorrow? I, I'll uh, send you the marks most probably today only. So one more test, give one more test, but a full complete test on this lesson. Because this lesson we have done in slowly also we have done this lesson. So tell me is uh, next class is on Tuesday. Next Thursday is fine for all of you. 8th of September or what? Fine by all of you or do you need some more time? The revision class for you, Darshan. Yes, uh, Darshan, uh, from where did you start? Were you there when we completed this? You were there when we had started with this, no? So I think uh, my, boy, some classes you were there. Which all classes have been missed? Just let me know. I'll arrange the classes. Or just at least let me know which all topics from where you have joined. You must be having all these in your notes. It's first today, no? So 8th of September. Is it fine by all of you? Bar magnet was the last assignment. Okay, okay. Then I think assignment sir. Okay, uh, Darshan, you were there in current electricity. So magnetics, this chapter four, any classes have been missed by you? Any topic you want to do revision? You want me to revise before the, this test? That I'm asking you for chapter four. Because your test, I have set it on Thursday, then I'll set it 8th of September. 
Thursday, next Thursday. So one week gap, I think, is enough for all of you. You'll have this weekend. Okay, revision of current electricity. Yes, yes, Darshan. Don't don't worry about it. Revision of current electricity will do. I'm just asking you about the fourth chapter. Are you fine? All of you are fine by this? Anybody is having any prior commitments? So let me know. Otherwise, eighth of September, I've fixed it. On the whole chapter. Yes, yes, the whole chapter this time at least. Last time we had only a specific topic, so I think you'll be able to cover it. When is your exam? Is the exam is on eleventh Sunday? Okay, before that, uh, that will be covered. Uh, Darshan, one more thing. How many lessons are coming? First four. All right, all right. Fine. Current electricity, I'll do with you. There are certain classes. I think on ninth. For current electricity, uh, current electricity only. So I'll I'll let you know. देखो, this question says show that motion of a bar magnet in uniform magnetic field is SHM. So SHM no, this this is very very easy question. You have to mention certain things initially. A bar magnet is kept in a magnetic field. So B is what B is the magnetic field lines. Yes, yes. S H M means simple harmonic motion. You had this lesson in your class eleven, towards the end of class eleven. So this is magnetic field lines, fine. Uh, then you have torque. P is the torque, which can be restoring and it can be deflecting torque. As well. Now theta is the angle. Between bar magnet and magnetic field. Fine, theta is what theta is the angle between bar magnet and magnetic field. Now, torque is what torque for a bar magnet we have studied. This torque is what m dot b. Sorry, m cross b, which is m b sine theta. So I can write torque as m b sine theta. Now, class, this sine theta, no, for small angle, according to the small angle approximation, this sine theta or even tan theta, if if any where you see tan theta, then also it will be the same. So th sine theta becomes almost equal to theta. From there we can write this as what we can write this as m b theta. Now see what is happening. In this case, restoring torque will be what restoring torque. This is from your SSM lesson. This is. From your system, simple harmonic motion. Yeah, you had waves and oscillations from there. Restoring torques, magnitude is k theta. So if you compare both the equations, are it the same with the value that k is m b? The fact that t z tau is equal to m b theta is giving you is providing you with information that yes, this is executing simple harmonic motion. So your k here will be m b. And torque. This is proving that hence proved it will execute SHM. Now you can relate it to more things. Whatever things you want, you have the constant term KMB. Omega is what omega is written as K divided by m mass, where m is the mass. Restoring torque means C. What is meant by restoring? 
one torque is acting for any force that is occurring in case of rotation that you know one torque is there which is the rotational analog of force for the linear force we have torque which produces rotational motion that torque is the deflecting torque restoring torque what happens if any object undergoes shm or any object's initial or mean position has been displaced so because of the deflecting torque we are able to shift this we are able to make this into some other angle but the restoring torque will act back and restoring torque will try to make this bar magnet or whatever object you have to its original position restore comes from the term restoration only to store anything back from there we have to uh, the torque stores the exact original position so that is known as restoring torque and k as we have discussed this is the spring factor Uh, yes, Darshan, I'll, I'll explain again. See, this you have understood, this part, how SHM has been proved, or oh, this is unclear. Okay, this is unclear, I'll tell you. See. Torque's major formula is what? Torque's main formula is mb sine theta, right? We have studied in the last class that torque is m cross b. Magnetic field is b and magnetic moment is b. M, the way we had p cross e. Dipole, electric dipole moment into electric field. Similarly, we have magnetic dipole moment into magnetic field. So when you open the cross product, you get tau as mb sine theta. Bar magnet will rotate by how much angle? 60 degree, 120 degrees. Obviously not a bar magnet which is kept in magnetic field. It will show slight deflections. So these angles are in reality very small. For our calculations, we draw it broader. But in reality, these angles are very small. So when small angle is there, no, for small angle means your angle is less than or equal to 15 degrees. So if this is the case, then you can approximate your angle. Means sine theta becomes almost equal to theta. For example, if sine 60, uh, or let's take a small number, sine 12 is there. So sine 12 degree will be having a certain value which obviously I do not remember, but sine 12 degree, you can also analyze. If you look at the log table, you will be able to find the value of sine 12 degrees. Fine. So if this angle is so small, if this angle is 12, sine 12 degree, so instead of writing no sine 12 degree everywhere, you can write it as 12 degree also. So once you'll check the log table, you will be able to find the fact that sine 12 degree is value is around 11 point something. So it is around 12 only. Because these angles are so small that even the sine, cosine or tangent of these angles give the smaller values only. So for small angle approximation, we approximate sine theta as theta. From here, if you write sine theta as theta, you get theta here. Now, restoring torque is what? This is the torque that restores the bar magnet. We have disturbed the position of it. Bar magnet was kept like this. Now we have kept it like this. So restoring torque will act. It will try to restore the bar magnet back to its original position. This formula is equal to k theta. This is given by the rules of SHM. We do need not, in class 12, you need not go into the details. That's why we have these lessons in class 11. So restoring torque is k theta. And if any system is able to satisfy, any rotating system is able to satisfy tau is equal to k theta. And any linear system is equal to satisfy f is equal to kx. Then we say those are those have satisfied the condition of SHM. Here also condition of SHM has been specified. So if you compare these two equations, you can see torque, torque is here. Theta, theta, what is left? This MB is ultimately the constant K. Now is it clear? How did we receive K is equal to MB? All right. Now, omega is actually equal to under root k by m. This is a formula from your waves only. So even if you want to put, you can put the value of mb. And see, here we are talking about rotation. So let's not write the mass. Let's write the rotating mass. 
and what's the rotating mass its inertia uh, sorry uh, mb divided by i fine class now under root mb by i we write this is for rotation if it was for linear motion fine you have no you have studied all these terms in your uh, rotation lesson yes rotational dynamics you had lesson in 11 there you must have studied uh these uh, center of mass center of gravity cog com radius of gyration all these topics so what happens actually in these cases no whenever we are talking about rotation certain terms have their analog fine certain terms have their analog and that remains fixed certain terms have analog like force when you talk about force you do not use the term force you always use the term what you always use the term torque for linear velocity for linear velocity you use the term what angular velocity so similarly here also we won't be using mass mass becomes moment of inertia so this you can write here as well frequency also linear frequency is given by uh, 2 pi divided by omega so you can write linear frequency as well this becomes 1 over 2 pi mb by i these formulas are rarely used but this is the extreme part that can be asked in your exam till here this question has ended k is equal to mb hence proof this was something additional that i have told you it can be asked in your exam to this extent maximum of the paper is difficult all right class note down this then we'll see one more question
see um, that is actually you not know, derived from the second order differential equation of SHM. That is not now included in your syllabus in class 12. You just have that in class 11. From there, we get omega square as k by i. O omega square is a constant that comes in the uh, second order differential equation. Just whenever you get free time, you know, try to look up into your class 11 notes from wherever you've studied. From there, you can identify omega is equal to under root k by i is fixed. So that's why we now in class 12, whenever any question is there related to SHM. So we use omega is equal to under root k by i if we have to find the angular frequency. Fine. If you people have noted this, no, just try with this question. This is all. It's a simple question. A magnetized needle of magnetic moment 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 2 joules per Tesla is placed at 30 degree with the direction of uniform magnetic field of magnitude 3 into 10 to the power 2 minus 2 Tesla. You have to find out the torque. So whoever gets the answer, send me in the chat room. All right, Zed, uh, torque is basically, yes, yes, it's actually the, not twisting exactly, twisting is when the above portion is going in one direction clockwise and the below portion is going in anti-clockwise. You can say rotation, rotational force. See, force, you know, force you, force is the normal, normal force that you've studied in your laws, that is there. Some push or a pull, which you say in the very, very, very common language, push or pull. Same thing that push or pull that rotates an object that we call as the torque. Let's discuss this. I think only Z has got the answer. Magnetic moment is given 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 2 joules per Tesla. It's placed at 30 degree with a direction of uniform magnetic field. 30 degrees here. 
and magnitude of magnetic field is 3 into 10 to the power minus 2 tesla. Torque is m cross v, which is mb sine theta. So, torque will be what? See if you put in all these formula in torque. Somebody else also got the answer? Fahad. Uh, yes, sir. mv sine theta. Hmm. Right. Fahad is also right. So, only these two boys have tried. So, m is 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 2. Magnetic field is 3 into 10 to the power minus 2. Minus 2, you yeah, know. And then into sine 30 degree. So torque becomes 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 2 into 3 into 10 to the power minus 2 into 1 by 2. This becomes what? 2.4. So 2.4 into 3 is 7.2. That becomes 7.2 and 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 4. I mean the unit what should write? Newton meter. Even if you write Newton meter, that is also fine. Newton meter is also fine. All right, quickly note it down. One more question. Read. Uh, one more thing, one more thing. Uh, Darshan. Regarding your current electricity, have you attended any of the class of current electricity? Do you remember from where have you joined? Or whole chapter has been missed? Whole chapter has been missed. Current electricity completely. Okay, Rash. Okay, fine. Even if you have any doubts from the first two chapters, let me know from any of the topics. Note down this question. Try this. At least first part, try it. Try this part. Then we'll then we'll stop with the numericals part and we'll come to the theory. Certain terms are still left to discuss, to be discussed.
Yes, yes, the radius will be 0.51 angstrom. So angstrom, one angstrom is 10 to the power minus 10 meters. This is the radius given. What's the first part? Equivalent current due to orbital motion of electron. Okay, let me write what all things are given. Radius is given as 0 0.51, no? 0.51 angstrom. Plus conversion of angstrom involves this. Okay, 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 fine. Just take two more times. Two more minutes. Then. Okay, you have solved also that. This is what? 3 point... Uh, is it getting divided or these are the two answers that you have sent? This is in division form. Okay, okay, divided. Fine. Good. So, there is only tried. What about others? Tried or not? Radius is given as 0 0.51 angstrom. No, I let, let me discuss it then. So radius is what? This is 0 0.51 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters. And I think velocity is also mentioned. What's the magnitude of velocity that was mentioned? This is 2 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. 2 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. This much of information has been given. So an electron revolves around the nucleus in a hydrogen atom of radius 0 0.51 angstrom with a velocity of 2 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. You have to find the equivalent current due to orbital motion of electron. See, current is what? Current is charge divided by time. Time also, time you can find it from here. See, time is what? Distance divided by speed and current is charge divided by time. And here the charge is the electronic charge. So everything is ready. Put in, it in here. So this is what? Okay, you have solved it also then. All right. So charge is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 divided by time 2 pi r so 2 into 3.14 radius is 0 0.51 into 10 to the power minus 10 r will go up 2 r pi r divided by velocity 10 to the power 6 this much amperes will be the current just solve it and check so i think after solving uh, just check everyone uh, z is getting 0 0.99 into 10 to the power 5 so i think the answer should be this only 0 0.99 into 10 to the power 5 Magnetic field produced at the center of the nucleus. See for the magnetic that is magnetic field that that is produced. This was the first part. Second part. Magnetic fields formula for a circle is what mu naught i divided by two r. So just put in the values. B is for this is 4 pi. So 3.14 into 10 to the power minus 7. 
divided by 2 into radius is 0 0.51 into 10 to the power minus 10. And this whole term for current that you have calculated from the first part, multiply by this, this much Tesla, you will get the magnetic field. And what's the last part? Magnetic moment associated with the electron. See, magnetic moment will be what? Magnetic moment will be current into area. Current from the first part you have to calculate and area will be pi r square. So r is 0 0.51 into 10 to the power minus 10 whole square. So this much of magnetic moment you saw. So you put the value of current from the first part. Pi as 3.14 and 0 0.51 into 10 to the power minus 10 whole square. This much ampere meter square. This much. So just solve and check. I do not remember the exact answer. So that's why I've just kept I only. So I think most probably it should be around 0 0.99 into 10 to the power 5. Z is getting. Please cross check somebody. Note it down and we'll do. Why we are writing this uh, value of pi? I, we are writing the value because I is required, like B is equal to mu naught I divided by 2R. So from where will you put the value of I? Current is not given to you in the question. But from the first part, when you will solve this, you will get the value of I, no? Something. That I do not remember the answer. Just check whatever is this value coming after solving, after the calculations. So that value which you will get, you can put it here. So you can get the value of magnetic field. Similarly, for magnetic moment, you require current. So current value that you have calculated from the first part, you can put it into the main formula. Got it, Fahad? Yes, ma'am. Okay, second part you're getting as 12.1 into 10 to the power 8 Tesla. Fine.
for the first one i got one ampere one ampere i think there will be some powers of 10 again third one see uh, sir formula for magnetic moment is current multiplied by area so area of a circle right now what is happening in your question the electron is revolving around the atom so it is in the form of circular motion so area will be what area will be for a circle so we'll choose pi r square as the area and current is i so current calculated from the first part so just check for the answers i think two different answers we are getting please calculate and let me know whatever answers you have after the class also you can calculate and check but method at least you should be able to understand got it sir why is it i into a it's the formula and area is pi r square because a circle has swing form that's why you know in the second part we are using b is equal to mu not i divided by 2 r can we start with certain terms that are there to describe magnetism first term is the magnetizing field see when a magnetic material is placed in a magnetic field magnetism is induced in it so magnetic field that exists in vacuum the magnetic field you are getting 0.80 for the third one z what third Okay, okay. Please, all of you, just cross it. I think all these answers must be correct. Ma'am, for the second one only, we should write the value of magnetic field. Right? Magnetic field only magnetic field at the center of a circle. So that is mu not by i uh, mu mu not i divided by two r. Radius, you know, current from the first part you will calculate. Put it there, you will get the formula. Fine. Now, magnetizing field is basically magnetic field. that exists in vacuum magnetizing field that exists in vacuum and this induces magnetism as well all these terms have the slight differences between them so magnetizing field magnetic field exists in vacuum induces magnetism for example you can consider a toroid a sol toroid or a solenoid carrying current i which is placed in vacuum so solenoid has what solenoid has n number of turns per unit length so magnetizing magnetic field becomes what mu not uh, b is equal to sorry mu not ni if let's say a uh, toroid has been kept if this toroid is kept in vacuum then the type of magnetic field you will obtain you will call it as magnetizing field this is just the difference that arose fine main important key term is vacuum this is the first term. second term is magnetic induction the magnetic induction means what okay sir come magnetic induction for understanding magnetic induction see whatever is the total magnetic field inside a magnetic material present for example let's say a wire is there so there will be total magnetic field present in this so the total magnetic field that is present inside a magnetic material it's what it's actually the sum of the external magnetizing field that is produced that we call it as magnetic induction so you can just say simply total number of magnetic lines if i say this is a wire here certain magnetic field lines are crossing so total number of magnetic field lines total number of magnetic field lines or crossing of force crossing per unit area normal is called magnetic induction
fine. This is known as magnetic induction. It's similar to magnetic flux only, total magnetic field lines. But there's a difference. There it was in terms of area vector perpendicular, should be perpendicular to the magnetic field. All these things, these things are not valid. So magnetic induction means inducing any substance to magnetization. Then you have magnetic field intensity. Now magnetic field intensity is important. From here you have a new term. Magnetic field intensity means the way you have electric field. Now that amount of electric field that defines certain area, certain charge, certain strength, that you call as the magnetic field intensity. You have intensity of magnetization also. That's a different thing, I'll tell you. But magnetizing in field intensity is what? It's the ability of the magnetic field to magnetize a material. Ability, it's the ability to magnetize a material. That is known as magnetic field intensity. So it is represented by the symbol H and the formula of H is number multiplied by the current, right? It's basically the number of turns that are present in the number of turns per unit length mainly multiplied by the current. This is the formula. So if B is equal to mu naught Ni for solenoid, it, this term is now H. So you can also write it as mu naught is equal to mu naught into H. The formula of H is one more. This comes this becomes B, uh, B naught divided by U. B naught, B only. This is the formula of magnetic field intensity. One more term, then you can copy it down because rest of, there, are, there are more than four terms, but let us discuss first four terms. See, intensity of magnetization before we begin the onto magnetic permeability. See, intensity of magnetization is what? When a magnetic material is placed in a magnetizing field, it gets magnetized. So magnetic moment per unit volume is known as intensity of magnetization. This is simply magnetic moment per unit volume. Magnetic moment is this, let's say M is the magnetic moment. So these terms are very closer to each other. It becomes very confusing when we refer to magnetic field intensity and intensity of magnetization especially. But there are differences between them, so you have to learn all these things. This chapter is a very theoretical chapter. Most of the things you have to remember. M is magnetic moment, V is the volume. Intensity of magnetization. This becomes magnetic moment per unit. Fine, this is it. Uh, one more thing here you have. See, the total magnetic field that is present. Total magnetic field that is present is what? This is the magnetic field. That is means magnetizing field plus the magnetic field. Magnetizing field plus magnetic field. From here, if you write the values of B naught, B naught right now only we have derived. See from here I have written B naught is what? Mu naught into H from here? Mu naught into H. So this is what this is, mu naught into H. And normal magnetic field is what? This is mu naught into magnetic moment. Fine. So from here, you can write B as mu naught H plus. This is, these two are the direct formulas for these. Just remember it. You have to remember this. Derivation, how this has arrived is there, but the derivation of this is not present. All right, so just understand first four terms first. First term was what? C, it was magnetic, magnetizing field. Means when magnetic field is there in vacuum, you say it is magnetizing field. 
second term was magnetic induction number of free lines that cross unit area normally that is magnetic induction magnetic field intensity is ability to magnetize a material if you have a iron wall using a bar magnet you are able to magnetize it then you have intensity of magnetization which is simply the ratio of magnetic moment and volume fine so note down these four points then other quantities will be so there are some more quantities as well but just know this down i mean the last two points we have to just remember the formula right yes yes you have to remember the formula and the definition you can remember this only magnetic moment per unit volume or the ability to magnetize a material one line it can come mainly that is utilized when we compare the diamagnetic paramagnetic and all these sections i'll share one table on the group that table you have to remember Yes, yes. Copy it down. This will be asked in your exam. This will be used. Note, note it down.
Now class four small terms are left. Let's complete with that. Magnetic permeability. See magnetic permeability is missing. Magnetic permeability is basically the ratio of magnetic induction to what? To the magnetic intensity H. This is magnetic permeability. B is what? B is the magnetic induction. All the definitions we have discussed, just you have to learn this. Magnetic induction and H is what? It's the magnetic intensity. Then you have relative permeability. Relative permeability we have already discussed when we were discussing biot servers. So remember relative permeability we have completed. Relative permeability is the ratio of the permeability for any medium divided by permeability for air or vacuum. This value is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 tesla meter ampere. Tesla meter per ampere. And this is what this is for any medium. And this is comparison of these. Then you have magnetic susceptibility. See class, you have to learn all these things. One more thing you have to remember that I'll send you the table first. Magnetic susceptibility is basically the ratio of intensity of magnetization. See, this is represented by the symbol chi. And I think chemistry, you must have used this for partial pressures and all this is used. Mole fraction, I think this is huge. So this is the ratio of intensity of magnetization to the magnetic field in intensity H. So M is what? This is the intensity of magnetization. While this H we have already discussed, this is magnetic intensity. Right now also it got used in magnetic permeability. This is magnetic intensity fine now it has the ray see it's the ratio of two quantities magnetic intensity intensity magnetic intensity intensity we have discussed no before this part magnetic intensity magnetic field intensity which is the number of ampere turns remember flowing down the unit length of solenoid to produce the given magnetizing field h is equal to ni we had started that way. That's the magnetic field, magnetic intensity. See, it will be confusing right now because all these terms are very, very similar to each other. So it will be very confusing for you all. Just go through the uh, these derivations. So uh, since it's the unit, it's the ratio of quantities that have the same units. Both of them have the units of these. Both of these have the units as ampere per meter. So ampere per meter, ampere per meter. This makes it as unitless. Last thing, relation between the magnetic susceptibility and magnetic permeability. See relation between these. This we have discussed right now. B is equal to mu naught H plus M. See, just take into your notes. You must have done this. And B is also equal to mu H. This also we have seen. Now, if you put in the formula of B as mu H, you get mu H is equal to mu naught into H plus M. Divide all the term by H. So you get mu is equal to mu naught. H divided by H will give you 1 plus M divided by H you have over here. Fine. So this 1 plus M by H. M by H is what? Remember M by H right now only I have made you write that was chi. That was your magnetic susceptibility. So chi M is M by H. So mu is equal to mu naught. 1 plus this is the relation between magnetic susceptibility and the magnetic permeability. 
all right so this relation you have to remember and if it is relative permeability so this will get divided so you just have this term where xm is what magnetic susceptibility all right write down these four terms as well
because both of them had the unit as ampere meter ampere multiplied by meter that's the ampere multiplied by meter in the numerator as well as ampere multiplied by meter in the denominator so it got cancelled so it became a unit less quantity uh what did i write near it just a second unitless unitless that makes it unitless no unit written till here just text me done when all of you have written i'll stop the class then uh eight uh, what oh uh, yes you said so so okay class all those people who have completed you people can start to leave on the next thursday 8 you will be having a test most probably on this whole lesson chapter number 4 i'll share it once a reminder on whatsapp also. start of today's topic um we had started with that question did you note that question two bar magnets were kept in cross position that you have written wo likh liye na sir bas wahi se start hua tha if you written that before that we didn't do anything oh so, okay la a uh, revision class will most probably be on 9th but before that i'll try to arrange a class for you otherwise on 4th we'll try to have it 4th or 9th i'll let you know when because other students are also there so combined class with yeah, yes i'll try to have the class on 4th so that you